Hello, I'm your host, David V. Welcome to Live at Lunch. Live at Lunch is produced by KRFC 88.9 FM in the Ginger and Baker Studio in Fort Collins, Colorado, and supported by the Music District, a music-centric gathering place to cultivate talents, support professional development, and encourage connections. Today's video is made possible by KRFC and Fort Collins Public Media. Today's sound technicians are Andy, Seth, and Colton, and Chris and Eric are running the video today. I'm excited to introduce today's guest, Many Mountains. Many Mountains here on KRFC's Live at Lunch. Well, Katie Nelson and Dustin Moran. Yeah. Hello. Hey. Good to see you. Thrilled to be here. <laughs> Great. Excellent. You, when did you guys first uh, find out that uh, your harmonies meld so well together? You know, we started 
really playing together in 2013 after some projects that we were in just kind of naturally dissolved. And, uh, you know, we'd play casually at home, but decided, well, maybe we should actually, you know, try to do this together and see what happens. Um, Both of us are self-taught. So, you know, I learned harmonies with my mom singing at like, you know, church stuff or something, or, you know, there's always music going on. The Beatles, lots of the Beatles helped me to learn harmonies. And uh, I think through that, we just started working on them a little, a little bit more. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Yeah, we'd start kind of writing songs at home and learning, you know, songs that we both loved and realized, hey, man, we kind of got a little sound going on. We should start getting it going and playing some more music and writing. Yeah, and I don't think, you know, I mean, maybe it's because we're from kind of the same area. I mean, Dustin has, you know, grew up in a lot of different places, but um, we did kind of have this core uh, time uh, being in Salt Lake City. And so I don't know if it has, you know, kind of that dialect or, you know, accent to kind of just (laughs) meld with each other. Um, But yeah, kind of just... We didn't put too much thought into it. <laughs> well, Utah's not known as a hotbed of music. That's and right. And I'm not putting Salt Lake City down. Certainly not. It's just you don't uh, you don't think of that when you think of music. So you mentioned your mom and, and church. Um, like so many musicians, those early influences got people singing in church choir and things like that. Um, Dustin, how about you? Was that pretty much the same for you too? or? Um, I kind of fell in love with rock and roll through the radio and going on road trips with my father. He kind of traveled around for work a lot and was in a transitory state often time. And I kind of would go and visit him at different little jaunts around the nation, but it uh, entailed a lot of driving. So uh, a lot of uh, 70s rock and roll and stuff uh, is where I first fell in love with singing and playing, you know. And um, it's a constant state of becoming. Uh, And then you get into high school and you get into some more punk tendencies and stuff certainly well at least I did I was living in Las Vegas uh during high school and stuff so I kind of got into some more aggressive music and um um yeah but eventually Katie Rose and I got together we started uh focusing on songwriting and people like Graham Parsons and Gillian Welch and David Rawlings Mm -hmm. And, uh, so when you sat first together and started doing your music, it sounds more like of Americana influences, which is, is coming through, obviously. Yeah. Not yeah. too many of the punk influences there yet. <laughs> yeah. But I guess we haven't heard the whole show yet. So <laughs> never know. We shall see. Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys going to play for us next? This is a tune I wrote called What Used to Be, and it's about uh, basking in those fleeting moments, uh, whether it's a sunset or a moment with a person. Um, and it's off our new record called Endless Time. What used to be. At the end of the night, before the break of the Let's ignore the fact Nothing didn't go out way Honey, I can tell When you look at me You see only a shell Of what used to be What used to be Okay. 
heart It's sort of hard to believe My mind keeps reverting back To what used to be What used to be Was a man that you could hold on to Used to be by many mountains here on KRFC 88.9 FM's Live at Lunch. Yeah, you know, I've got a lot of uh, Everly Brothers and Jamestown Revival vibe there going on with the uh, harmonies. I don't know if you guys see it or not, but it really comes through. Oh, thank you. Thank you, yeah. I guess the Beatles owe a little bit to the Everly Brothers. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, what what motivates you guys to write your music? you know, obviously everybody had a lot of time during COVID, uh, but uh, they seem pretty intimate, the lyrics and the songs. So what what drives you to, to put your music together? Yeah, as songwriters, we tend to write separately, you know, just kind of on our own. Um, whole songs or does somebody come up with the, the music and somebody come up with the lyrics? Pretty much the whole song. Yeah, and then we'll come together and, you know, kind of tweak it as as it, you know, seems fit. Um, or if, you know, maybe you've got like 90% of the song, but then you just need that extra ear to kind of fill it out. Um, I started writing personally, uh, poetry before I started writing songs. Um, it's always just been kind of this compulsive way for me, you know, very cathartic to understand what's going on up here or in here, you know, just to, to figure it all out. Um, so once I started, you know, learning guitar and putting those two things together, it's really kind of constantly going on in my head with, um, you know, ideas or, um, you know, good and bad. <laughs> and uh, so for me, uh, yeah, it's absolutely just this um, subconscious drive that, you know, is always kind of running through my head. But how about you? Yeah, for mm-hmm. myself, it's, uh, yeah a therapy a catharsis type thing you know self-exploration you know um uh journaling in the form of song type thing um but uh i owe a lot to music and different songwriters and particular songs uh for my general happiness and well-being you know i love music so much and um one of the best ways to honor it is to uh kind of dabble your dabble your toe in it and try your hand at it and uh try to push it up the mountain 
you know? Yeah. And trying uh, to emulate your influences. Yeah. You know, well take, uh, yeah, you know, well in regards to life, uh, you know, uh, courses of action and doing things, you know, um, you don't want to emulate exactly, but, uh, um, but taking, you know, uh, taking influence from people is certainly, you know, um, a way to learn how to write songs. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> I feel like that's how I learned to write songs is, uh, you know, just listening to all your all your favorites. And it's kind of cool to um, feel like you're a part of that tradition and, you know, and like weaving your own thread through the tapestry of of music and trying your best to, to write songs that you're proud of and that reflect something real from you, um, you know, rather than just uh, trying to write a really excellent pop song which is fun too I mean not to say that like you sit down and you're like I'm gonna write a song that I don't typically write I think that's really great too um but you know it's so fulfilling when you can write something that feels like it's really a part of you did you guys have any mentors that I don't know necessarily pushed you towards music but made you want to start pick up and start playing um I, I would have to say that I was pretty self-driven in regards to uh, the pursuit of it. Um, and as, as Katie said before, we're self-taught. And um, I never really took any guitar lessons or whatever in a, in a formal sense, you know. But, you know, in high school you get in a, in a gr- band with a bunch of guys trying to jam it out. And you're playing in the wrong key and you don't know the scales and stuff. And you realize quick, oh, wow, well, you know, there's, there's, some, there's some rules to this. It's not, you know, just f- freelance into the, you know, sonic ether with uh, whatever. <laughs> there's some rules and there's some dialects and dialogues and um, technique and all that stuff. But I learned it on the go and I learned it on stages and out there in the field playing it and and sometimes fall, falling on my face and sometimes catching a groove. Yeah. And Katie, you'd mentioned your mom, but was there anybody else? Um. You know, not really, except just coming from a music-loving family. Well, and I would absolutely say Dustin was someone who really encouraged me to pick up the guitar. Because when we started um, seeing each other, which was back in 2008, um, you know, I knew a little bit of chords, um, wrote poetry, and was trying to write some songs, and was in my room trying to play as quietly as possible so no one could hear any mistakes I'm making. Um, but Dustin really encouraged me to to pursue it and, to, you know, helped me to learn more about the guitar. I just saw um, so much potential and, and, and um, yeah, I just saw what her songs could be and wanted to honor them. Yeah. 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 So he encouraged me a lot. Excellent. So, yeah. Well, you're going to play something else from the new album, Endless Time, here, Uh, Dark Nights and Dark Mornings. What's the story behind this one? So this one um, was written uh, during the lockdowns, and um, one of those songs that's really about insomnia and all of the weird things you think about when it's 2.30 in the morning and you can't go to sleep, and it's pitch black outside, and you might as well just try to write a song about it, so. (laughs) Here we go, Many Mountains on Live at Lunch. Oh, 
can't get information I'm trying to figure out time and what's coming down the line while I'm interpreting images in front of me cause I keep teasing in the hall of what lies beyond self-discovery there's so many things I take to find a sense of relief if I had a Dark nights and dark mornings, they all see in me. And I know that it's hard. Watching it pile up like snow in the earth And wanting a new way To see a new day And make it all break it to say While these bad thoughts Is it my bad luck Or just my reputation You love those dramatic endings, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I get the, get the mood going. <laughs> How did the name Annie Mountains come about? When Katie Rose and I first started writing music together in a, in a real format, you know, to, to put out into the world and to play live, um, we put out an album that was just called Dustin Moran and Katie Rose. You know, we didn't have a moniker. It was just the two of us. But uh, we, when we just were thinking for a name for that first initial EP, uh, we were looking for the name, and we were listening to one of our songs, the playback or whatever, and it said, show me to the fountain. I have seen so many mountains. It's one of the lyrics in our song. And we are like, well, many mountains. There you go. Cool. So that's the name of the record. Yeah. And then we got a band together, um, and we were like, well, we need a moniker. It's not just she and I anymore. So we are like, well, we're many mountains. Many mountains behind us, many mountains in life. Yeah. <laughs> And speaking of band, are, do you almost exclusively perform now as a duo, or do you also play with a full band? Since 2018, we've been playing exclusively as a duo, but we're optimistic to be playing with a band for a few shows this summer. Yeah. And, um, you know, people come and go, and, um, you know, so we've had a band at some points, um, but we've always had some sort, of, some sort of time trying to keep a band together or whatever, so... The last couple of years we've been doing a duo, but we're very excited. We're going to get some live shows with a full band going this year. Yeah. Speaking of live shows, you guys have quite a few coming up here, keeping yourself busy this summer. Looks like Friday, May 6th, you're going to be at the Main Stage Brewing in Lyons. Mm -hmm. Then Sunday, May 15th, the Wheelhouse in Niwot. Friday, May 20th, the Tasty Weasel in Longmont's Tap Room. And let's see, Saturday, May 21st, the Prickly Pear Tavern, again, in Lions. Yeah, a couple so. Lions gigs coming up. Yeah. Uh, any uh, festivals or anything that you guys like to do a shout out that you're going to be playing out this summer? We'll be doing um, Rhythm on the River in Longmont. Yeah, uh, there's a in festival July. in Longmont called Rhythm on the River. And, uh, yeah, we get some stage time there, so we're excited about that. Yeah. And we're optimistic to have a full band at that. Yeah, we're excited, too, because the uh, main stage does these songwriter evenings, um, you kind of these series throughout the summer, and we're going to be a part of that, too. And I think that's in uh, June, so that'll be fun. Wonderful. What yeah. are you going to play for us next? Oh, this song is called Distant and Mythical, and it's actually uh, one from, from the first EP we put out, uh, which was in 2013. And uh, it's a song that I wrote um, at this place called Leela's in Denver. It was a 24-hour place uh, that unfortunately didn't survive the pandemic but um, it was actually written on one of those dark nights dark mornings depending on how you see things and a Tom Waits song came on the radio and uh, I kind of wrote this in response to it I suppose well the chorus was inspired by a conversation Dustin and I had but it's distant and mythical yeah. <laughs> Well, I knew it 
stories about women meeting the devil doing on the streets distant and mythical distant and mythical distant and mythical and ghostly a voice skipped across the room it was right in the rhythm you get trumpets grab your sound here on KRFC's Live at Lunch, radio from Colorado for Colorado and the world. Yeah, that was pretty. Thank you. Enjoyed that. Thank you so Thanks. much. I was going to ask you guys what the best place for fans and listeners to go to to find out information, your upcoming shows, swag, music, things like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, our website, manymountainsmusic.com. Uh, we have all of our show dates on there. You can stream our music for free on there we do have some merch available as well uh so that's the best place uh instagram also we are you know actively promoting our shows and various things so wonderful i you do have two full albums and three eps out yeah why don't you list the names of those yes so in 2013 i believe it was we put out our first ep called many mountains and um that's a four song ep then we put out um, a EP called Many Mountains, which is another four-song EP, which included a band that was... Uh, oh, yeah, that's called Wild Wind. Pardon me. We put out an album <laughs> called Wild... Or an EP called Wild Wind. Yeah, Wild Wind. And then after that was Lost in Love, which I think was 2016. And then um, we actually... Our first full-length record is called Never Looking Back, and it just had its fourth birthday on May 1st. We released that in 2018. Yeah. And then uh, we released our most recent um, record, Endless Time, on January 1st, 2021. Endless Time. Yeah. Great so, album. Thanks. What brought you to Fort Collins or Northern Colorado? Kind of um, looking for an, a new place to be creative, you know. At the time, uh, we left Salt Lake City, which was about 12 years ago, 10 years ago or so. It was a bit more of a constricted culture 
from our perspective in regards to the creative scene and stuff and and um, was that because there are limited places to play or yeah at the time there was or, I mean, yeah and the you know a lot of the places to play were um, like metal or punk or um, oh, like really? electronic that's music that's more the culture there huh yeah there's yeah. a lot of that for sure you know but I, I will say yeah as time has gone on it's become much more of a uh, you know yeah opened up a, a bit more yeah opened yeah, up totally. a bit, quite a bit more yeah, yeah. which is awesome and it's a so, beautiful place Mm -hmm. Did you have friends or family here? I mean, you think of Austin, you think of a lot of other places. Uh, it just seems to me like so many musicians are drawn here to northern Colorado. Just mm -hmm. curious, again, why? Yeah, yeah so um, I had come out. They did the Mile High Music Festivals for those three years. I think the first one was in 2008, and they did one in 2009, and then maybe 2011. Um, they did, uh, but I had come out to Denver to see that. Um, at one of those years, I think it was 2009, and really fell in love with the community and and uh, kind of the vibe, those uh, those monumental mountains up there on the front <laughs> range and just the whole scene. And uh, was looking for a change, you know. It was a pivotal part of uh, deciding what you're going to do in life. You know, I was about 20 years old, 19 or whatever, and uh, just trying to figure out what a what course of action to take. And Denver, I had seen a, a bunch of concerts and kind of got an idea of what the vibe was and so we we came out here we lived in an extended stay hotel for like three months then we found a little spot and uh now we live in Louisville, colorado mm -hmm. and um it's an incredible community and uh, pretty central love, yeah yeah, yeah 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 and we get love coming quick, out get to, to fort collins quick yeah and we we love that it's um and it's a really supportive community um so it, it really feels like home you know? did the fires come close to you here they did, yeah. Um, we had to evacuate, uh, but fortunately, um, our place was safe. I suppose, like as the crow flies, it was about a mile or a few blocks anyway yeah, uh, down under down the mile. road. So, um, very yeah, very scary. Yeah, absolutely. And it was you know one of those things we were watching the news, and you know the evacuation notice came, and we just kind of looked at each other and grabbed the guitars and our dog and some dog food and <laughs> most important things in your life yeah right. yeah. yeah no we feel yeah. grateful that we were able to be together when that happened because it was yeah it was really scary, Pretty scary. Yeah. i'm sure it was and i'm sure you probably had a lot of friends that were affected by it too yeah, yeah. definitely unfortunately mm -hmm. so yeah. done you wrong is the next tune here yes this next song we like to play is called done you wrong and it's from uh our album never looking back which had a birthday yesterday yeah. and what's the story about this one i believe this one is about um, perhaps in retrospect, being twenty hindsight being twenty twenty type thing, and wishing uh, you could have made uh, uh, you know had different actions in the past or whatever, or maybe treated someone different who uh, um, you might have taken uh, you know um, advantage of. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> or, or took for granted uh, the relationship you might have had with someone. The song's about take, uh, yeah, taking for granted the relationship you may have had with someone and wishing you would have acted a little different. All right. Many mountains. <laughs>
care of C's live at lunch i like that that's a great tune thank you sir so uh, you guys have been going to concerts yourselves here lately when you yeah. go out and about what do you see we saw marty stewart at the boulder theater and that was eye-opening and so inspiring so good and that's got to so be good. one of the best bands in the land for the past decade or two yeah it's, it was it's really a child inspiring. prodigy and uh, uh, right. keeps playing and, and they're just so Ugh, you know it's just they're dripping they're so good you know they're yeah. really so good i know you feel like you're in the the, the w watching royalty play or uh, something yeah, yes, sir. yeah so it, was, it was a lot like that it's a lot like that yeah. yeah and we like to do that too we like to go see the kings you know uh one of the first shows katie and rose and i ever went together to see was bb king yeah and um that was fun was he standing or sitting for he the was show? sitting yeah because when but, i saw him he was sitting yeah for the he show. was sitting but when he left he got up and he pulled out uh what were seemingly gold uh, chains and started throwing them into the crowd to the first couple <laughs> rows. Just like a B.B. King memento. Like a keychain? Yeah. Uh, no, it was, it was like, like a necklace. necklace. It looked like, <laughs> wow. looked like it would have went around the full neck. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. You was definitely like want to be a first rower for that. <laughs> yeah. I tried to reach down there. I should have yeah, brought my Inspector Gadget people. arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. That's funny. But, yeah. you know, we like to see him. Um, we, we really love Bob Dylan, so we'll go and see him every time he's in town. We've seen him like six times. Mm -hmm. And, and we uh, like to see a lot of local bands. Um, we recently saw a little set um, from the Kindhearted Strangers in Longmont. Mm -hmm. um, Danny Schaefer, he's always yeah. one of our faves to to see locally. Um, so yeah, we've had a, the pleasure to do that. We played the um, uh, the Spring Walkabout in Longmont, and uh, that was really great. Um, a lot of the times when you know your friends are playing, you're also playing, so you can't go out to see them much. Uh, so that was fun. We were able to run around and try to catch as many people as we could see any future collaborations with local musicians coming up here man that'd be really great uh yeah but certainly that would be awesome you know but <laughs> yeah. uh, nothing in particular yeah. we uh yeah. we're working with some musicians to get a little band format sure. going but um but no like collaborations on some songwriting or anything yet but that That's would be cool still just the two of you great. yeah yeah nothing wrong with that <laughs> yeah well, you're going to play something from an EP out of here, uh, Get Out and Run. Yeah, Get Out and Run. Which uh, is always a good thing here in Colorado. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And uh, kind of a song that's, um, you know, you're always like chasing that next thing of, of you know, whatever, kind of whatever it is, I suppose. So Next best thing. The restlessness. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is Katie and Dustin here on Live at Lunch. Feeling that lingered as I moved out of bed No, you don't have to break your back for me Never meant to take it this far and too deep and For the chance to take it all you bought your ticket 
stops, that's what I hear from you after taking your time along. Why my mind is on a different track, babe, cause I ain't been attached to any home. I know you want to understand the stagger around, cause you're Mountains here on Live at Lunch doing Get Out and Run. Katie Rose doing her own backup vocals in addition to lead vocals there. <laughs> yeah, a lot of Thanks for noticing. I'll give you a little breather here. <laughs> All right. So um, any shows that you've been to that were like super special that uh, I know you mentioned things that you've been seeing lately and some of your favorite artists. How about uh, shows that you guys have played at? Any interesting venues or areas that you played? There's been a, a handful of cool things. Um, you know, we got to play in Taos one time. We went down to Taos and played in, uh, I think it's called the Taos Inn, correct? It was yeah. this beautiful mm-hmm. adobe room that kind of made up the courthouse, or courtyard, rather. And um, Good acoustics? It was, yeah, it was very beautiful, and um, all the patrons of the hotel are, and people of that town, it was, it was a cool, cool evening of music, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, one time, we got to open for the Gin Blossoms. Wow. Um, at the Louisville Street Fair, and that was awesome. You know, that was like a big time show. Um, nice big crowd. There's a lot of people there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot of people, so you could you could feel that inertia or whatever. Yeah, that was really fun. Um, we've we've had some interesting shows too, where we played this. Uh, it was a like a private party, but it was at this Ace Hardware in Bennett, Colorado. Interesting. Yeah, and it was really fun though. Like the the community was so great, and um, we were you know playing by hammers and saws oh yeah (laughs) hoping that the saws didn't fall on you uh, yeah it was uh but it was so fun but it was a lot of fun because it was kind of this um unusual place for a show um but we got it going we got the speakers all set up and the community came out and they were having a good old time i don't know that they have a lot of uh folk rock duos come through uh you know or whatever have music have live music in bennett you know i think it's few and far between sometimes yeah but uh, so anyway, they were very enthusiastic, and there was a lot of energy transmission. Yeah, it was yeah. so great. And uh, Niwot, um at the Wheelhouse that you know we have coming up, but that one's always a fun one because um, it's you know great listening room type of, of vibe, and uh, everyone's always really great. So I'll run through those dates again: Friday, May sixth at Main Stage Brewing and Lions; Sunday, May fifteenth at the Wheelhouse in Niwot; Friday, May twentieth at the Tasty Weasel in Longmont, and Saturday, May 21st, the Prickly Pear Tavern in Lyons. All right. Got a special song coming up now. Kind of a debut, huh, moment? Yeah, this um, this is a, a new song of ours. Um, sorry if I try to tune this up a little. Yeah. Um, and it's a song that um, 
is written and kind of inspired by this idea of, uh, you know, every action of love is uh, what creates a new world. You know, if you're talking about like multiverse and, you know, other other universes or other planes of existence, um, it you know, every expression of love is something that creates that new world. Um, Butterfly effect. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So it's called Moment. from many mountains here on KRFC's Live at Lunch. That was a moment on a yet-to-be-released uh, album. Yeah, yeah, we're um, hoping to record either, you know, a full length. We're kind of deciding if we're going to do an EP or maybe just release some singles or a full length. And, we've, you know, we've got a handful, so pretty exciting. And it's good you're doing both digital and uh, hard copy CD for people. Yeah. 
I yeah. assume you usually have those available at your shows. We yes, do. Yes, sir, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, people watching uh, have the ability to get your music if they choose. Yeah. 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 That's great. So how did COVID-19 affect you guys? 2020, did you just sit at home and write music? Or did you do, some people did like their own little video shows and things on YouTube. Why don't you fill us in? What happened to you guys? Yeah, Uh, it's kind of interesting. We actually went um, on tour um, at the end of February. We actually, our first show was in Amarillo on Leap Day. So February 29th. And um, of 2020. Of 2020, yes. And um, we had a you know couple of weeks going down through Texas and into Louisiana um, to, at a stop to stop in New Orleans because that's where Dustin's dad's side of the family is from. And so great place to visit. Yeah. Gosh. Oh yeah. So wonderful. <laughs> oh, love yeah. it. Love it. And um, so we were able to do the entire tour. We you know our last show was in New Orleans and we were able to stay there for about five extra days just hanging out with the family and um, it was on the way home home where everything was locking down. Um, I remember we got home on Friday the 13th and then we had a show the 14th and the 15th and then it was the 16th that everything, you know, we had a show on the 16th that was canceled and then it was like dominoes, you know. Um, So very jarring, of course, for everybody. Um, We definitely had to kind of take stock in in what we were going to do because going through Texas on the way home with like intermittent cell service, you know, people in the music community are like live music is over as we know it. It was very twilight zoney and, you know, kind of had to focus on getting home and doing what we could. But throughout that time we recorded and uh, wrote some stuff and and did live, uh, live streams. We had to, um, kind of take a pause in the live streams because Dustin had uh, a retinal detachment. So he had to How have this very serious surgery. It's kind of like a spontaneous thing. It was n- not one particular moment or impact, really. I didn't, uh, you know, have any, uh, you know, knocks on Injury. the head or anything. Yeah. Typically, that's what would happen is like a car accident or, um, you know, hitting your head really hard, you know. Mm-hmm. But I just kind of spontaneously happened and, and uh, in my opinion, you know, I was driving through Louisiana when we were on that tour, and I started to see a bit of a, a warped type sensation, you know. It looked like a little cellophane over the glass or whatever, just a little bit of warped distortion. Yeah. And when we got back, um, you know, COVID had begun, and it was kind of an interesting time. But I eventually got it checked out, and they said, wow, you've got a detached retina. You better go get it checked out and, uh, and, and patched up. So I was able to get it all patched up, and we're all good now, but it was certainly a scary moment. Yeah, so we were doing some live, every week we would do a live stream, and so that kind of um, put a pause on it. But uh, then we got um, lucky, you know, I feel very fortunate through that when, you know, with businesses that were able to do outdoor live shows, um, we were able to do, you know, quite a bit of those. Um, We did what, you know, we called curbside concerts, and so would do a lot of... um, home shows and um for like or like neighborhood block party type of things you know distanced but um so that was fun you know definitely going from playing out so much which we just adore it you know it is so fulfilling and that exchange of energy which is something that doing um you know the live streams it was you're missing that obviously because you're just at home and you know trying to connect through through the screen but um we were able to do some live shows with you know, throughout that time. So that was really special. Do you guys do all your own booking? We do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which one? I mostly, I would say, (laughs) (laughs) but, um, peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. Yeah. (laughs) There are times where it levels off more, but, um, I do a lot of it. I feel Mm -hmm. like actually since maybe 2020, it's kind of evened out a little. (laughs) You keep yourselves busy. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Although Dustin does when we record it's, it, you know, his, He's, yeah, I kind of the the record all the music engineer. guy, too. You know? yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and we spent engineer. a substantial amount of time on in 2020 doing that, recording our record Endless Time. Yeah. Um, Teamwork. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah all to... hands on deck type thing, yeah. for sure. And there's only four. <laughs> Share the load. <laughs> yeah. Well, Many Mountains here on KRC's Live at Lunch. What would you uh, like to play next? We're going to go ahead and do um, the song Dry Leaves in the Fire, which is off our new album, Endless Time. And this one's uh, been around probably longer than any of the songs on Endless Time. And it didn't have a proper home, so we decided to re-record it. And, uh, yeah. and uh, there was a demo version going around on the internet that we put up on the internet. 
Yeah, and, it's uh, on SoundCloud. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this is the uh, more substantial album version, and uh, yeah. yeah, it's called Dry Leaves in the Fire. Thank you for listening to Live at Lunch, and thank you to the Music District here in the heart of Fort Collins, Colorado. Live at Lunch is produced by KRFC 88.9 FM in the Ginger and Baker studio. If you'd like to appear on Live at Lunch, email our music director, David Vosick, at david at krfcfm.org.